To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hello everyone, I've decided to do something a little bit different today. A little request I've seen from people on Twitter. I wanted to do a Haunted Mansion commentary ride-through, if that makes sense. Starting, of course, right here in the Pet Cemetery. Now, I'm in the Fast Pass line, so obviously I can't stop to talk about all the pets, but my favorite is old, beloved Lilac right here at the end. I, I just think it's great someone kept a skunk as a pet in the Haunted Mansion. Anyways, let's continue. After being so rudely interrupted by the train venting steam, I just wanted to point out this small haunted birdhouse in the queue. I think it's really cute. I also wanted to talk about the hearse in the queue, believed to have belonged to the Mormon prophet Brigham Young. It didn't, unfortunately. It is from the queue we move into the foyer, not necessarily the stretching room, but it's the first room in the haunted mansion that we enter. And I always love the chandelier hanging above, how it's so pristine, it never moved, and the ghost host narration obviously also starts here. And from here, let's move on into what everyone's waiting for, the stretching room. Here we're looking at the ballerina Sally, and right across from her, we have the man who's in his underwear standing on a, bu on a bucket of dynamite. You don't know that yet, obviously, because the room hasn't, hasn't stretched. Um, the gargoyles standing here are very, very interesting, I think. Sculpted, of course, by the incomparable Mark Davis. You can find his artwork online and his inspirations for these gargoyles. And the room, if I am correct, should begin stretching very soon. There we go. So now you can see the pa the paintings uh, stretch and morph depending on what uh, how what the length of the room is. So right now you can see that the ballerina is obviously on a tightrope, but then there's the secondary gag I think of the crocodile beneath her. So there's three I would say three separate paintings. You have the first initial painting, the second gag, and then the third gag, which makes it a little more uh, creepy, a little more unnerving, I guess. Someone standing on a bucket of dynamite and obviously being above a crocodile isn't ideal. But now we are going to be introduced, whether we like it or not, to the ghost host hanging from the rafters above. So the lights will go out. Everyone will start screaming. It'll all be super scary. And you can see that that corpse hanging there is actually the ghost host, not Master Gracie like in the movie. That is the body of the dead ghost host that's probably confirmed canon, or as close as it will get to that in Haunted Mansion storytelling. But now we will transition from the stretching room full of creations by Mark Davis to a changing portrait hallway full of creations by Mark Davis. Here we have a wonderful cat lady laying on the wall, and when lightning strikes, she turns into an actual tiger. Next to her, we have an actual historical figure, the Black Prince, riding his ghostly steed. And yeah, this is actually based on a real historical figure, I believe. I'm not sure what his real name was, but he was a prince, and uh, he was the ghost now in the Haunted Mansion. Here is not Master Gracie, or Master Gracie, just a portrait of a young man is what it was described as. And then, of course, the ghost ship inspired by the Haunted Mansion's original idea as the house for Captain Gore. Any volunteers? Now, the paintings are interesting, but I think the woodwork below the paintings is a little more interesting because, like Rolly Crump stated, everything in the Museum of the Weird or the Haunted Mansion would have had a face. Here are the negative impression busts that I can't look at without getting a headache, but you'll notice that the woodwork is actually skulls. You'll notice this later on, I'll point out the gates to the cemetery also have faces on them, the pillars coming up right before you load have faces on them, and of course, there's the famous chair with a face on them, all designed by Rolly Crump, I believe. So unfortunately, I couldn't get a shot of the pillar in good lighting, but trust me, it's right, right, right before you get on the Doom Buggies on your right hand side, and it's got a face on it. And coming up on the right hand side again, there's another gargoyle, probably designed and the left hand side by Mark Davis also. I don't know if these pillars have faces on them. They might, but I do not believe they do. Now this safety spiel is probably the best safety spiel I've ever heard at Disney Park ever because at the end of the Spanish safety spiel, he says a very scary word that I don't know what it means, but it sounds like prepare yourself. So uh, 
we'll continue with that. Some girls were on their phones, but uh, we'll, we'll try to ignore the, uh, the impoliteness of other guests as we ride through this part of the attraction. Now we're entering the endless hallway with the suit of armor on the right. This one does not come to life, unlike the ones that did earlier on. At the end of the hallway, we have, of course, the candelabra in the mirror, and you can see the ballroom lightning if you look closely through the door on the left, and the chair with the face designed by Rolly Crump, again there on the left. On the right, coming up, we have the raven, the original ghost host, and the ghost trying to break out of the coffin. For those of you who don't know, the raven was originally going to be the ghost host guiding you throughout the mansion, and that's why if you try and look really hard, you can find the raven in different locations all across the mansion. And basically, he would act as your tour guide throughout the mansion. He appears in that funeral scene, he appears in Madame Leota's seance room, and if you look closely, you can see the hatbox ghost picture hanging on the wall here, the original hatbox ghost. The crow also appears in the ballroom, as you are descending down into the graveyard scene and right before you enter the hitchhiking ghost scene. Another clock designed by Rolly Crump, you can tell with the obvious faces. And if you look behind you, you can see the small hand cut out going over the light in order to make that effect. Now, I noticed recently when I rode through this part of the Madame Leota scene, the wrap on a table effect was not working. You know how she tells a ghost to wrap on a table, it's time to respond? The wrapping on the table wasn't working and it was just completely quiet after that scene. And it was very funny to just have nothing happen and have the room just be completely quiet. You can see Madame Leota's spell book right here in front of her table, containing a picture of death himself and an incantation to return someone from the dead. The the crow, of course, sitting on the chair behind her, and tarot cards in front of the chair, probably where she left them before she died and, I guess, possessed her, her disco ball there. And from Madame Leota's scene, we move, of course, into one of my favorite scenes in the entire attraction, the ballroom scene. There are just so many ghosts to spot here. You can see a real-life version of the bust from the negative impression from before, the spooky specters flying above, and you can see the crashed... Uh, the crashed hearse with the pirate captain and the old grandma in this scene is actually whose knitting is actually based off of the grandma in the carousel of progress the same animatronic believe that or not here we have the women leading the men in a ballroom dance the imagineers didn't think about that and the spider on the right hand side there if you can kind of see it in the mirror the ride stops at this point because the disneyland mansion always stops but it is at this point where we get our first inkling of the beating Heart bride. You can hear her heart beating as you ride past. Here we have the photographs, I should say, of Constance and her various husbands losing their heads. And this gives you hints about when they were married and who these people are. And coming up, the photo next to Constance is of George Hightower, Harrison Hightower, the owner of the Tower of Terror in Tokyo. It's his brother. So there's Constance, one of the earliest projection animatronics, and I don't really think she's aged that well, and my favorite projection animatronic, right here, the Hatbox Ghost. Moment of silence, everyone. Moment of respect. What a fantastic effect. Now, of course, we have the ghosts flying up from the graveyard, and if you look up, you will see stars in the night sky. Only in this portion of the graveyard, though. The Imagineers didn't put stars throughout the rest of the graveyard just at this point, because you're only supposed to be looking up here, I guess. The crow, again, guiding us through the mansion, and of course, the goodest boy, the gravekeeper, and his dog. Someone get that dog a treat. He really looks like he could use it. At the top of the gates here into the cemetery, you will notice another face. I didn't really catch it that well, but then we're going to move on into the graveyard scene. The trumpet player and the bagpipes player here are the same sculpt of the face of the whistling pirate from Pirates of the Caribbean in the prison scene near the end. If you guys didn't know that, very interesting tidbit there. Moving on, we have the singing busts. Uh, the one that is broken is not Walt Disney, but is in fact Thurl Ravenscroft. And now we move on to the ghosts riding a bicycle, having a tea party, just having a grand old time. And this tombstone right there in the bottom left hand corner, if you guys saw that waving back and forth, actually never stops moving. Even when the ride is closed down, that tombstone going back and forth never stops moving moving. It's a little trick there put by the Imagineers, so it's, it's, it's a little fun piece of Disney history there. 
look up again, we have the crow guiding us out of the haunted mansion and into the hitchhiking ghost scene. Phineas, Ezra, and Gus, in that order from left to right, standing there. Uh, the Walt Disney World version actually has a little chest, a little trove of objects. Now, my camera does not excel at filming low light, my phone camera at least at this point anyways. So, if you can tell, I got Ezra in my Doom buggy. Just patting his hat, making sure he had a grand old time. And now we exit the Doom buggies, but the attraction isn't over. Here, to my left hand side, I film a little sconce holding a torch, and I think they are the coolest things ever. I want one of them in my house. I think they're so cool. I'm not quite sure why I love it so much, but I just like the aesthetic to that. Based on an old French movie, Beauty and the Beast. Not the, the one you're thinking of, a different one. Not made by Disney. And here we have little Leota, a woman dressed in a cloak holding a bundle of herbs and flowers. She's not in a wedding dress. She just looks like she is. And then from here, we finally exit the Haunted Mansion back into Disneyland Park proper. And I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary spur of the moment ride through video I made. I'm thinking of doing another one, a more in-depth one, a more edited one, when I get home from Disneyland. If you guys are interested in that, a more informational, you know, with freeze frames and talking about little scenes here and there, kind of ride through of the Haunted Mansion, let me know if you're interested in that. Other than that, though, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.